View this video from the playlist to see the complete video content. In this segment, I want to talk to you about driver rotation. Driver rotation is one of the elements of timing your sewing machine. And this particular process is a very important thing to understand because if the driver is not set properly, the machine just won't sew. You're going to end up with skip stitches or no stitches at all. So if you've tried setting the needle bar height, you've changed the needle, uh, you've tried looking at and, and polishing burrs on the cap spring and you still are not having any luck sewing, it's time to look at the driver rotation. We're also going to do this on the LS1 sewing machine because I feel like I haven't uh, concentrated on it enough in this video, but I want you to know that whether it's the LS1 or the LSZ1, driver rotation process is exactly the same. To look at the driver rotation, we're going to raise our needle up so that it's not interfering with the hook assembly. Let's tilt our sewing machine back. And once again, I'm going to remove the slide plate just and set it aside so you can see a little bit better. Remo remove our bobbin case, as we've seen many times. Remove our retaining ring. Notice all of this is very much the same as it was on the LSZ1 sewing machine. And now here is our hook, and of course it falls out. And what we're looking at when we talk about the driver is this piece right here that rotates as I turn the flywheel, that is the driver. And we call it the driver because when the hook is in place, it is driving the hook back and forth in order to interact with the needle to pick up the thread. And you can see that relationship looks very much the same as it did on the LSZ1 sewing machine. Now, when we discuss this, what we're looking at is again, it's sort of related to the needle bar height because we're looking at that interaction between the hook and the needle. And we want to make sure that it is in a proper position where the hook is going back far enough, so here's back, back far enough that it has enough room to come forward and pick up the loop of thread. But we also want to make sure that it's not back so far that when it comes forward, it's late to pick up that loop of thread. So this is set properly, and the first thing you should do anytime you're getting ready to, to check the timing on a sewing machine is to verify where it is to begin with. Then you make adjustments after you verify. Right now I know this one is perfect, so I really shouldn't be adjusting anything, but I wanna show you what it looks like when it's wrong and why it won't work. So here we see again that it, the bottom of the hook point is just above the eye of the needle, which is correct. Let's set the hook so that it's too far retarded, in other words, too far back, and show you what that looks like. To do that, we need to release set screws at the base of the driver. There are two. Here's one, and then the other one, when I rotate the driver, I can see it up through the top here, right here. And what we find here is, is that so these are set extremely tightly. Our guys in the sewing department don't want the hook to slip on you. So if you have trouble loosening one, always go to the other one and see if you can loosen it first. This one loosened on me pretty, pretty well, so no problem. And then I'm gonna come back, rotate my flywheel so I can gain access to the other one, and I'm gonna loosen it. This one's a little harder to get to, especially when I'm trying to stay out of Eric's way with the camera, but we will get it. Okay, that one was a bit tighter, but it is now loose. So now the driver is loose, and I should be able to now actually move the driver counterclockwise by hand and set it so that we can see what it looks like. So I've moved it counterclockwise. Let me show you what that looks like. This would be with the driver retarded or not far enough forward. So I'm gonna put my hook back in and you can see now, look at that gap. The gap is, the hook point is way back here. Now watch what happens when I swing forward. As it comes forward, look at the eye of the needle. It's going up, 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 and look at that. The point is below the eye of the needle. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to catch a loop of thread through the eye of the needle if the point is below the eye of the needle. So that would not work. Now let's go to the opposite extreme. Now I'm gonna rotate the driver. I've got it loose enough I can move it. Now I'm gonna rotate it so that we're too far advanced, we call this, and now when I put the driver in here and rotate it, notice the driver point is not even going behind the needle. It's right at the side of the needle. And so if I go forward, it's not going back behind the hook far enough to catch the loop. So I will also not be catching the loop and I would be skipping stitches.
both of these situations would result in catastrophic stitching problems, no picking up of the thread whatsoever. And I, I wanted to go a little further forward. I'm gonna do that now. Oh, that's way far forward. And put that in. There you go. See, now the hook point's not even going behind the needle before it changes direction. There I would never ever catch a stitch. So those are, that's showing you sort of the wrong positions. The other thing I didn't mention is when you're making this adjustment, not only can this driver rotate clockwise and counterclockwise, but it can also move in and out on the shaft. So you really want to look before you start making this adjustment at how far that center shaft is either recessed in the driver or protruding from the driver. It shouldn't be protruding at all, but it, it should be roughly flush. And when you're done with this adjustment, you need to make sure that it stays in that same position. So uh, uh, I, I neglected to mention that, but I want to make sure that you do know that that is the case. You want to make sure that it stays at the same left and right position. Now, to reset this, we're going to, we know we have to move it back, and I've got it loose enough that I can move it. Sometimes these are quite tight, and you, you may have to tap on them with a screwdriver back here in order to move them. But I, this one's loose, pretty loose. So I've got it back. Now I'm going to put the hook in, and there, actually, I got pretty lucky there. Notice where the hook is. Now, assuming the screwdrivers don't change that we're sending in the packages, the smaller screwdriver that you get has a point width that's about 3 16 of an inch, and the hook point should be 3 16 to an eighth of an inch back. And notice, I, so I can use it at sort of as a feeler gauge, and you can see that right there, that is pretty much perfect. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in here where our set screws were, and I'm gonna just snug up one of those screws. I'm not gonna set it really tight, I'm just gonna snug it a little bit so that I can always make fine tuning adjustments. So the name of the game here is to fine tune it. We wanna make sure that we get the point of the gib hook back that 3 16 to eighth of an inch, and then when we rotate forward with the needle bar height set correctly, according to the score mark on the needle bar height, review that chapter if you need to, uh, come back, rotate so that the point of the gib hook is just in front of the eye of the needle, or in front of the needle, front surface, and the eye of the needle should be below the bottom surface of the gib hook point. Once you're happy that that is the case, then we come back and now we're really gonna snug up the two set screws at the base of the driver, and we're gonna make sure that they don't slip on us. You do not want to have these set to granny tension, I always call it. In other words, if you're bending your Allen wrench, you're not gonna strip out this, uh, this driver. It's a really hard metal. If you're bending your Allen wrench, you're doing it right. You wanna bend it and your thumb should turn white while you're applying pressure to this. Or red, I guess it would turn. And you can see I'm putting quite a bit of force on that to get it tight. And I'll go back and forth and hit them both a couple of times once I'm sure I've got it set right. And you can see I bent the Allen wrench a bit tightening this, that is acceptable. Now once we have it tight, just to make sure, I'm gonna put my hook back in, rotate my driver, make sure everything looks good. My head's probably in the way, but yes, looks good. Now I'm gonna put my retaining ring back on with my needle up out, and then lock my clips in place, put my bobbin case in, and we have successfully set the driver rotation. Mm -hmm.